Good day, fellow investors. Today I want to show you something that I personally find extremely remarkable. And that is the difference between an investing top-down approach where you look at the macro, the Bloomberg, the news, the recession chances and what's going on versus a bottom-up approach where you go stock by stock, stock by stock, business by business, and then you see how that affects also the macro. Today we're going to do exactly that. I've started doing something and I've started going through every stock traded on the Italian stock market, the Milan Stock Exchange, and I have found something really remarkable, an indication of what will happen to our environment, especially Europe. And what I found will also explain what Michael Burry has been warning us about all the time. So yes, we are likely to see CPI lower, lower inflation, possibly even negative compared to the second half of 2022, but recession ahead and the Fed and ECB will cut what is left to cut and government will stimulate which will lead to another inflation spike as he says it is not hard to understand and in this video i really want to go through what i found by looking at every business there one by one how the bottom up picture is much more straightforward than any top down picture you can get i hope you enjoy this if you do please don't forget to bottom up that like button. So as I have told you, I've started doing this analysis of every stock on the Italian stock market. I'll likely do also an American counter index just for fun. And then as you go one by one, you always find something. And let me immediately start with the first one that is interesting here, A2A. And my simple conclusion is too risky because of the leverage. They are a utility, renewables, whatever. But if you look at the stock price, the shareholders that invested these peak moments haven't been really well rewarded. 2012, the Italian financial crisis European was very bad. And then thanks to the ECB printing money, it was okay until the last few years. But I'm just looking at this company and in their strategic update, they say they will invest 11 billion euros into various renewable projects. Now, my question is 11 billion, from where will that come? And if I look at that, I will not invest in it, I'm not interested, but their expectation is for the average cost of debt to be just 3% in 2026. And they have extremely high levels of debt, 6 billion, a 4.2 billion market capitalization. That is really, really insane. But they expect the ECB piggy bank to always be there, to always provide eternal liquidity at extremely low costs. That only the ECB is keeping such businesses in Europe and Italy alive. And as they are doing that, they are distorting the financial system. And that is the main risk that also Michael Barry warns us, because when all these companies get into trouble, go bust, then you will see what Michael Barry has been warning us all about. Another business, this time real estate, Abitare in, they project stylish houses, even their investor relation is extremely stylish. This is extremely important when you build projects and houses. And they have done really, really well since the IPO in 2016. Now it's a little bit slow down, but they are still doing well. And the stock price is 592. All the analysts have target prices 50% higher. So all great. But when you look at the business model, the business model depends on interest rates staying low because that depends on the customers and the bank liquidity that again depends on the ECB and the customer liquidity also that depends on loans, interest rates, staying long, etc., etc. 
But what if things change? Inflation, the ECB is forced to keep rates higher, the business model becomes questionable again, and it doesn't work in all environments. And this is already the second one that I found, and I'm only on the A's, that doesn't really work in a different economic environment, which is, again, a huge risk, because when these businesses get into trouble, the government will intervene. There is no way out of it. Another example, this is a multi-utility. They do hydro infrastructure and other things, and they also plan to invest everything and to increase its EBITDA. Of course, we always talk EBITDA because interest is out, taxes is out, depreciation is out, amortization is out, then everything looks good. But the stock price, again, didn't do much. They are paying a dividend. But if I look at their market cap, 3 billion, their leverage 4.7 billion and constantly going higher and higher. As I said, all these businesses are all alive, all well, but just because interest rates have been kept at zero over the last 12 years and they expect, okay, maybe those will go to 2-3%, but if there is a shock to the system, especially in Europe, things will spiral too unfortunate things that we haven't yet seen, not even during the financial crisis of 2009 and 2012. When you look at such an index, which is the Italian stock market, when you look at the S&P 500, there is only the best in it and all the other indexes. These smaller countries have every stock in their stock market list. And then you see also what happens to investors when things go wrong. Here we have IEDES, Another thing that went down 60% all time, 90% from the peak bleeding cash issuing stocks. Another one, Agatos, Biomethan, that didn't work. The stimuluses were there. Then they disappeared. And you see how, I don't know, what's this, 95%, a few hundred million euros got lost. And I just made a few, I just started this, but I really wanted to share this with you. And from the list I did, so these companies are not even Italian companies, the Italians that remain, we have a few of them that do leverage, risky business, leverage, gone bankrupt, gone bankrupt. So it really shows how this is a distorted market, thanks to all the actions from the ECB of course, in the US, the Fed, and that will have to continue because these businesses, unfortunately, the majority of them can't survive in this environment. And this is not sustainable because if you look at how many businesses can survive, compare also the European automotive industry to get destroyed by cheaper Chinese built cars if we all go electric, then there will be the need for a lot of stimulus. And this is from PwC. They say how there will be a lot of competition from China despite the 10% import tax from China. And that will hit also European manufacturers. And I think it was someone from Daimler that already said that they will need help to protect the industry from competition. Thus, the ECB will help tariffs, we as customers will pay higher to keep those jobs, to keep kicking the can down the road. But at some point in time, we will simply have to accept a decrease in purchasing power. And if inflation that already took 50% of our purchasing power over the last few years keeps on going and uh, there is no other solution there or pain or more money printing, thus more fire to the inflation, which eventually leads to a bad, 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 bad recession. And that is exactly what Michael Burry is explaining. It is not hard to understand. The only problem is we don't know when it will happen. And then when you look at it, Europe is even worse as it doesn't have the power of the dollar. But even a recent article from Ray Dalio discussed how the dollar is fading 
away. The only thing I know is that things will be very, very volatile and we'll be looking for businesses that offer protection. And if you want to read a little bit of my notes here also or uh, AMD, I will not make a video, you can just read it. I'll put a link in the description below to my research platform. I have put it here just for reference 2022 research. It is on free preview so you can enjoy it for a while. Then as I add much more interesting things there, I will delete the free preview so you have a few weeks to check that. The key message here is that the risks are there. We have to be very careful when it comes to those risks. And the problem is that nobody knows when those risks will materialize, but the risks are there. And therefore we have to invest accordingly. Tomorrow, a company that has some risks, but on the other hand, again, might mitigate some other risks. I'll see you tomorrow.